So first, you need to find the production houses that do voiceovers, mm -hmm. the directors in those production houses. And sometimes they are independent producers that handle voiceover project. Create a relationship with them. Let them have your demo. That's one of the first strategy you should deploy in the African space, apart from South Africa. South Africa has a different. But apart from South Africa, the rest of us were about the same thing. Hi, and welcome to the Everything Voiceovers podcast. I'm T-Code, an African voiceover talent from Nigeria, and this is my podcast, where I take on voiceover topics from an African perspective. On this episode, my guest is Emeka Onunkwa, the founder, casting and creative director of the Nigerian Voice Bank. He's also the convener, VO Africa, and he tells us more about his journey and Africa's biggest voiceover conference. Sit back and enjoy this episode. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Everything VoiceOver podcast. My name is Tiko, your host, a voice actor from Nigeria. And on this show, I bring up uh, voice actors in the continent that are doing great in their field. And we talk about voiceovers together. So with me on this episode is the founder, casting and creative director of the Nigerian Voice Bank, who has directed voiceover projects in Nigeria, Zambia, Ivory Coast, Ghana, and Kenya. He has directed sessions in Swahili, English, Pidgin, Hausa, Igbo, Yoruba, and has worked for several brands, including Adidas, Jumia, Glow Calf Awards, HP, Guinness, Google, Western Union, WHO, and many more. As a creative business developer, he has created and hosted the VO Africa Conference in 2021, which has been tagged as Africa's largest voiceover conference. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the one and only Emeka Onunkwa. Emeka, it's a pleasure to host you on this podcast. How are you doing today? I'm fabulous. I'm also happy to be on this platform. Thank you, T-Code. You're welcome. Yeah. So let's get back to the gist before, you know, I, I hit the record button because we're having some very interesting conversation, a bit of background. I was, um, Mika was telling me of how he has seen me evolve in the past 24 months. And I, I think it's something that I was blushing and I want to hear the full version <laughs> of the compliment. So, Mika, let's get on with it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, like, like, like I was saying, which is very, quite instructive. Um, mm. The past, the last 48 months, there wasn't any T-code in the space. And in the past mm. um, 24 months, uh, in the past 12 months, to a large extent, the past 12 months, it's amazing to see how much you've done. I say to my friends and colleagues in the industry, it's important for everyone to understand their place in this industry. That's how mm -hmm. we grow. Understand what you are in here to do. There's some guys that are in this space to attract jobs for voice talent. There's somewhere mm -hmm. in this space to trade. There's somewhere in this space to create, to drive information. Now there's yeah. somewhere in this space to inspire people. If you understand what you're in this space for, do it. Now that's how mm -hmm. it becomes well-rounded. You look mm -hmm. like some guy who understand what you are in this space to do. And you're doing it. And you're going to see that along the line, when you look back a few months, you see impact that you have made. And you would, you would actually, you'll actually be grateful that you understood what you were supposed to do. So you sometimes you see people who, um, who wants to move with a trend, say, um, this part of the industry is thriving. They want to jump in there. That part of the industry is thriving. They want to jump in there. It's going to be loop-sided. We, mm. the, we want the holistic growth. And yeah. there isn't growth without people. People actually are the growth. So yeah. if you understand what you're supposed to do, hey, come in and contribute your quota. And when your time is done, it's done. Someone else picks it up and continues. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate this. I take it as a, as, as a huge compliment and it <laughs> motivates me to keep doing more, you know, and, and speaking of what you mentioned, knowing what you are supposed to do in the ecosystem, it's very important. You see, I take lessons from other industries aside the voiceover industry. And um, for instance, in the music industry, I'd always reference the music industry because it's also an audio related industry. Now, 
you have the music artists, the the people who sing and write the songs, but those people aren't successful without the help of other individuals, you know, other skill and uh, creators, skilled people and creators in the in the in the industry. So you have you have people from the legal side because you need to run a record label, you know, to make sure that this song goes out there. So you have the the managers the road uh what they call them now road managers you have um the producers you have the accountants the legal people the journalists everybody puts in hand together to ensure that this industry moves forward and i think that um the voice of our industry also in africa we need that kind of synergy and networking the more we have people to for instance document uh, our stories and write about, you know, create content around voiceovers for Africans, you know, it, it'll take the industry to the next level. You may come into the industry wanting to be a voice actor, but at the end of the day, you find out that you're first of all, a lawyer, and that will be very relevant in the industry. And then you can come in and help sort out legal issues with clients, you know, you know, just add something. That's the way I see it. I'm, I'm a, journalist right i'm an ordinary personality and i find expression in in doing this as well as a podcast right so uh, that's just to corroborate what you you mentioned about doing something that matters in the ecosystem of voiceovers and i, I think that's very profound <laughs> yeah it's it's actually awesome what you do um great keep it going thank you very much so let's get down straight to uh the the podcast today let's start with the last time we we saw and which was i think the first time we would be meeting physically that was earlier this year at the voiceover conference in lagos uh we were having a conversation in our brief chat you mentioned that your surname is oftentimes mispronounced right and uh that is something i'd like you to pronounce and the reason why i'm asking you to do that again is on this podcast i've been engaging with some african um voice talents from different parts right and i realized that even myself i struggle to pronounce their names properly and i feel it is worthy for us to know the correct pronunciations of these names and also the meanings behind them right so uh, let, let's start with your name what's the full meaning of your name and the pronunciation Okay, my name is Chukwemeka Onungwa. It's usually a struggle to say Onungwa, but that's the mm. surname, Onungwa. Now, if you ask me, um, Chukwemeka is straight. Um, God has done so well. That's what it means, Chukwemeka. God has done so well. Onungwa, mm. I don't know what that name, what it means, actually. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, Interesting. So, so, so. Now, this is it. It has diverse translations. It has diverse mm. translations. So I'm not mm. sure which one applies to me. Now, mm. um, Onungwa could mean, um, it could mean, um, there's a market data that's called Onungwa. Onu means okay. mouth. It could mean the mouthpiece of the market day. It could, be, it could also mean a bed. It mm. could also be like a town crier also. So it's diverse, but I'm not mm. sure, um, well, um, Daddy didn't explain which one is our own um, direct translation. So okay. I wouldn't want to tie it to anyone. But for my first name, Chukwemeka, it means that the Lord has done so well. All right. Great. So I'm just going to say Chukwemeka on Nunquo. Awesome. All awesome. right. Awesome. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. So let's talk about you growing up in Nigeria. Of course, your name is Igbo. That's from the southern part of, or the, the southeastern part of Nigeria. So did you grow up in that part of Nigeria or was, were you from time a Lagos boy, you know, as we say? <laughs> oh, well, well, um, when I tell my story, you tell me if I'm Lagos, if I'm a Lagos boy. But I was okay. born in Apapa. Uh, was I born? No, I was born in uh, Festac, actually. I was born in Lagos. Festac. My dad first lived in Apapa before he moved to Festac. So actually, I'm a Lagos boy. Lived all my life in Lagos. Uh, wow. Yeah. And blessed but, to be born in Lagos, actually. But do you speak Igbo? 
Oh yeah, I do speak Igbo. I'm a sweet boy. I'm a onya. I'm a onya for. Interesting. Interesting. You know, there's this thing about us being um, South Easterners. We are mm -hmm. so connected to our root. That's why you mm. find um, every festive period, especially towards the end of the year, we always mm. want to go back home. Yeah, mm. we always want to go back home. So we were always so uh, we're so so uh, in touch with our roots to a large extent. For instance, I went to school in the East. Uh, my university was in the East. Now, it was um, specific because I needed to learn the language. Growing up mm. in Lagos didn't do me so well. So I, I couldn't mm. speak a lot of the language. But I'm I'm I was I'm grateful now that I made that move. I mm. made that move to school in the East and specifically to interact more with the Easterners and understand the language. Because I direct sessions in Igbo right now, and it would have been an awkward moment if I cannot correct um if I cannot um make direct impact in an Igbo yeah. session. And sometimes yeah. we're arguing over translation. And you know, sometimes um, um, translations can be very, very tricky. It could be mm. very tricky, especially from when it's from English to any of uh, the local languages, because mm. some guys translate out of context. And mm. then when you translate out of context, you could totally, you could totally mislead the audience and you could totally damage the brand and the brand's message. So sometimes, so when you find when you, you, you there's always that um, there's always that click when you hear something that's out of context. So, but if I could, if I can understand the language, hey, that would be ridiculous, really yeah. awkward. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I can I can speak English. I can also speak Igbo. I understand English. I also understand Igbo. Fantastic. That's um that's good to know. So understanding that or knowing that you understand the language let's get to the the voice part of this conversation um which came for you first or yeah let me ask it that way was it the ability to create voiceovers or the ability to cast people for voiceover jobs like how did you even meet or you know come across voiceovers in your line of career was it something you wanted to do or you just stumbled on it okay so um none of the scenarios been my picture so it's different um i started uh i started loving advertising i love advertising it's it's it pulls me it it's it's i love the creative space so when I got out of school, I wanted to, I, I found myself writing copies. So I wanted to write copies and sell them. I am mm -hmm. good at thinking of ideas. So, and I wrote this copy that I wanted to pitch to Guinness. The idea was to pitch to Guinness. And a friend, um, a friend advised that, hey, why don't you create a finished product? Because the copy can't, people really can't connect with copies sometimes. Why don't you try to create a finished product and then you can um, pitch the product, even if it's a prototype. And then I look back and I realized that I needed a voice. And what kind of voice do I need? In my mind, I needed a male baritone voice with a beat of the accent, but speaks good English. You know how that mixes? It's an accented, yeah. African accent, ac accented, but speaks good English with good diction. So mm. um, if you see some of the, uh, the beer adverts in the past, like my name is Udeme, you mm. can you can hear the richness, of course, the beer voice. You can hear the beer voice. And then yeah. you can also hear the fact that this guy is learned. The, the, the guy, he's, he's, actually, he's actually connecting to an affluent audience, the kind mm. of audience that brings that, 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 that takes that product. So I was I was going I was lucky that was the concept of the of the copy, but then I was a nobody in mm. Lagos, as crazy as Lagos, as crazy as the media space was many years ago. How could I call for an audition with the guys listening to me? Will I even find what I'm looking for if I call for an audition? How much will it cost? 
And then I thought that if there actually was a place where we can just go on the internet and listen to voices and find the voice that we want and connect with the talent, then it will be easier for a lot of people, especially in my situation. And that's truck. Whoa, hmm. that's an idea. And I felt like, okay. And I checked. There wasn't anything like that existing in Nigeria at that time. Of course, it didn't look like a lucrative business. And I trust myself. I'm the kind of guy who wants to dare everything. I, I jump in. I jump mm. in. When I see that it is needed, I don't I don't always think too much about the business. I think a lot mm. about creating things, things mm. that people can use. So I that's when the idea of the Nigerian voice band came. And I spoke to my friend and I said, hey, I've got this idea. Put voices on the internet and everybody can listen to them and access them and connect with them. And he says, oh, I said, can you do it? He says, and he said to me in the exact words, I can do anything as long as you can pay for it. And I'm like, <laughs> cool. <laughs> and that's the story of how the Nigerian Voice Bank was bettered. And that's how my journey started. I started mm-hmm. as a platform guy, connecting voice talents to... Um, companies that needs them. That was mm-hmm. the intent, but the intent wasn't to be the wasn't to be the one casting those voices. The the intent was to be um, to create the platform where they can actually go in there, and it was supposed to be an online casting platform. That's the intention. So you can do your casting yourself, but you don't need mm-hmm. to call for auditions. Mm. So that's how the journey started. And I realized that, okay, that's not working. Some of the guys who need the product are actually not casting directors. So they want you to help them do the casting. And that's where my, my ears were casting. I started developing my ears. In fact, in fact, what happened was that that's when I realized that the, the gift was in me. It just mm. came out. It just came out. I saw that I was able to solve people's problem and see projects come alive. And I'm, I realized that, mm-hmm. okay, okay, I should be doing this. I can do this. And for the fact that I was, um, I was interacting with a lot of, um, um, a lot of um, global brands that were looking into the African market, they don't even understand the African voices. They don't even understand the segmentation and the accents. You get it. So yeah. um, I, I was privileged to be the guy who, who came into that space, who understood that need, and who also had that inbuilt ability to cast voices. So that's how my journey started. But before then, before then, I, I was all, I was doing voiceover in my church. Um, oh. I, I have, a, I, yeah, I grew up, I grew up attending the youth Anglican church. It was a youth church. And so we used to do all this. Um, I was in the drama unit. I also do um voice over to me do announcements and sometimes read poems in class in in church so you find yourself you go into a room and then you read the poem and then you come up and they say was it you was it you that was a and then you feel like a superstar (laughs) (laughs) wow so that's a mix of a story uh, but that's that's it it's always never perfect it's always not a storybook um experience but that's how my story was Wow. And, and um, if I am not mistaken, this whole thing started in 2012, the Nigerian Voice of a Bank. Actually, um, 20, say late 2010. 2010. The idea oh, wow. came in 2010. Um, we started, we did a prototype of um, the, the website. I didn't like it. I discarded it. Started the game. So hmm. eventually... We launched it on the 14th of February in 2012. Hmm. That's a long time ago now. That's oh, about, yes. Um, oh, yes. 10 years. Yes, 10 yeah. years. Wow, it's it's a decade old, plus the extra two <laughs> years, you know. <laughs> yeah. And interesting, because yeah. um, I had always wondered how you came into voice casting. And, and this isn't something that I would say it's very popular. Of course, voiceovers many people get into voiceovers but for for the voice casting uh niche or field it's quite uh gray many people don't know what it's about and let me ask this question is it now you by virtue of the platform are able to go full deep into voice casting how would you say people grow to becoming 
um, a casting director? Is there is there uh, a growth process into it? Is it via experience? Is it via training? Or is it just by chance? Okay. Now, um, first, my journey started a bit earlier when it comes to the voiceover industry. I started mm. by listening to um, Femi Shiwola. I don't know if you know Femi Shiwola. Yeah, the legend. That was the Femi. first, that's the legend. That's the first voice that struck a chord in me. Mm. Ah, I can relieve that experience. That voice is golden. Now, mm. when I first heard him, I was like, how can anybody have this kind of voice? And then my interest for voice started. I started listening to voices more. I started loving voices. I started to differentiate between voices. And then uh, I picked an interest for radio. Then we had Reedim. We had Ray Parr. I think it was Ray Parr first, and then it was Reedim. And then mm -hmm. those two radio stations and the voices they had then were, they were awesome voices. So I spent, I spent a lot of time listening to music and the voice that came after the music. So both of them were interesting to me. Now, mm -hmm. and then um, Cool FM came in, then Foster with his own flesh. So I could, I find myself differentiating between voices, telling myself what is great about this. And also because I have that interest in advertising, the the emotional connection of the voices also stand to, stand to make sense to me. Now, mm -hmm. these were, all of these was happening was taken from in me without me knowing where it was going. Hmm. So if you ask the people just come into it, I think there is, um, sometimes we're born with it. Hmm. So we're natural bonds, but we have to find it. Then we have to train it. We have to grow it. We need to be around voices much more. And then we also hmm. need to have an analytical mind. Then we hmm. also need to understand copies. Also mm -hmm. need to understand um, advertising. Now, you have a copy. You also need to understand what's the copy intended to achieve. Then you also need to understand audience. You also need mm -hmm. to understand segmentation. Now, why, why is all of this important? If you're going to cast for a project, you need to understand what's the end goal of this project. Say, for instance, we're casting for Indomie and this project is targeted at, you know, Indomie is quite interesting now. Yeah. When it started originally, it was targeting children. It mm. then realized that, okay, yes, children love Indomie, but the gatekeepers are the moms. Mm. Then it started targeting the moms and targeting the children. Then they realized later that, okay, students, love Indomie, whether they're males or females. Then they started targeting youth, young people in school. And then uh, even um, even teens going back to school. So Indomie, Indomie started becoming a part of your, if, especially if you're in, in a boarding school, it's part of yeah. what you take to school. So they Provision. understood the, exactly your provisions. They, they understood that their audience, uh, their market was evolving because humans are dynamic. So yeah. also, their copies must be dynamic. Their copies will mm. evolve. They will have to target a segment. And mm. then you who's the casting director, when you see the copy, you need to understand, okay, this is uh, targeted at young people, or this is targeted at women, or this is targeted at young women. Then when you, then you know that when you're casting, you're casting for young women. You know that you are casting for young women in a certain geographic location that you need to understand mm -hmm. how the sound like you get mm -hmm. now yeah. if i'm casting for yoruba young a young yoruba woman i don't have to be listening to an english voice she be listening to okay. a yoruba voice then i should be able to differentiate um okay i need young voices I, i'm targeting people between 30 to 40. i shouldn't be using an old voice i should be using mm -hmm. a young voice so it's all of those things so it's a beat of advertising. It's a beat of voice. It's a beat of um. It's a beat of creativity. It's mm. a beat of a lot of things that comes together to make you a good casting director. Do you go to school to learn those things? I haven't found a school for casting. Sure. 
But can you learn on the someone? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. You mm. can learn on the someone. And then mm. that person has to be able to understand what the end goal is when he's casting mm. for a project. Interesting. Taking us into the world of voice casting. Uh, you've been doing this for... So you started the voice acti- uh, the voice over bank in officially 2012 or the platform launched. When did you translate to becoming a voice cast, um, a, a casting director? Okay, so that started uh, late 2013 towards 2020 and uh, 2014, 2004. Okay. So 2012, 2013, 2014. Yeah, t- towards the end of 20, 2013 to 2014. Now, what happened? Don't forget in, okay, you may not know this. In 2013, I did organize um, a voice of a conference. Voice of a conference. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> oh, you saw that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. I did my research. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah, Many yeah. I did. don't know about that. Yeah, I saw Many that. Many people don't know. Now, so, it as well. Good. Yes. So, so yeah. the, the the reason for that was when I started the the Nigerian Voice Bank, I saw that there are a lot of people who have interest in voice casting, voiceover, who really don't understand what it is about. They have great voices, but I'm seeing that um, the usage of the voice is not there. But they they have good sounding voices, but they can use their voice. So I felt that there was need for education. So. For me to create the conference, I did a lot of research. I did a lot of research. And then I come to, I came to the point where I realized that a conference is needed. And then um, I also came to the point of understanding my place, what I needed to be doing, what I needed to be doing. And then that's that. And then in 2013, after the, pro- the conference and all of that, towards the end of 2013, I started having projects that required that required data ability. Mm-hmm. And so for me, a lot of it, I learned on the job. And I'm privileged to all those guys who were, who were willing to give a rookie like me their project. Mm-hmm. And every time it came out right, or every time it came out wrong, you learned something. So either mm-hmm. way, nice. so that's how it evolved. So I would say fully in 2014, I was casting for I was cast. I was. I was casting for project. I wasn't interested in doing voiceovers in voiceover anymore. I was interested in casting and the business of voiceover. Fantastic. And I would assume that you, when you started casting, you had local cli- uh, clients more before you transcended to the foreign clients. Because I know you've 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 casted across the continent, and that that is. Um, that is something, you know, and that must have come from an international client, if I'm not mistaken. So so what was the dynamic like from working on local um, gigs to going international? How were you able to connect with talents from different countries and, you know, do your job as to casting? Did you have to travel down there? Was it over the internet? Like, how did you mature in that process of going from local to international as a casting director? Okay, something um, something you must know about me is I'm a very adventurous person. Hmm. I'm a very adventurous person. So when it all started, when I found the love for casting and um, the business of voiceover, I was ready to dive in. So hmm. I started local. And I realized that there was um, there was a need that needed to be met, and that's the need for um, um, for helping global brands connect with the African market. You get mm-hmm. so yeah. I found that I found that need about between twenty fourteen to twenty about twenty fourteen that um, the lot of um, a lot of the odds then that run in Nigeria wasn't done in Nigeria. You get it. Mm. The videos are shot probably in South Africa, the shot shot in the UK, Singapore, but um, they needed to run this project in Nigeria and some African countries. So they needed to localize them. That's when I stumbled on localization also. And then because this project needed to be localized, 
I needed to grow. I needed the to have to uh, to grow the ability of helping these guys localize their project in the Nigerian market, mm -hmm. and then in doing that, I realized that the same problem exists across Africa. Mm -hmm. So now, for instance, a multinational brand like Coca Cola, when they're doing a massive campaign. They want to run it across several countries in Africa. Hmm. Now, the guy who is handling the Coca-Cola account may be in South Africa. He doesn't understand the East African voice. He doesn't understand the West African, the West African voice. But he needs to do those projects. But he has, um, he has, they have, um, they have um, companies, they have branches in those countries. They have staffs in those countries who know those voices who also understand mm -hmm. that you have to use our voice to target our audience yeah then they will then, then they need a casting director and an acting director by the way i do both so i'm a casting mm -hmm. director and an acting director acting director so on both projects you will need a casting director you will need an acting director the casting director cast for the voices uh, go, then the acting director would direct the session. Hmm. You get it. So they're two different so, things. Mm. Yeah, they are two different things, even though they are yeah. sometimes interwoven. So yeah. that's how the um the uh metamorphosis began for me. So before long, I was I was doing this, I was doing that. Now it now became about Africa, not necessarily Nigeria. Because the same problem you're solving in Nigeria exists in Ghana, exists in Kenya, exists in Ivory Coast, exists in Zambia. Now the next thing is the opportunity to solve this problem across Africa. And I'm pretty, I'm, I'm grateful to God that the opportunities came. Because that's that's mm. just it. My story is about my story is about the opportunities. Mm. The opportunities that God opened up to me. And the fact that I was able to um to meet up to those things. And then when it came, um, trust me, before COVID, we could travel with ease. I was willing mm. to go to Ivory Coast. I was willing to go to um, Kenya because I couldn't trust the game. The, the game is different in Africa. Mm. You can direct a session in in, in uh, with a talent in, in America, in the US or in Canada or in the UK, and it could be yeah. fine. Now the Africans, because we're we're still learning this, we're still learning voice acting. A lot mm. of our talents don't also know how to self-direct. Mm. Now that's another ball game entirely, self-directed. Now, so you find out that you have to be in the room a lot of times with them to direct mm. them. Because if you leave them to self-direct, they will they will um give you the same thing over and over. You correct a mistake, they understand the mistake. Hmm. They agree with you. They try to uh they try to correct it, but they end up replicating the mistake hmm. because they can't self-direct, which is a skill entirely on its own. Now, if you will find that and not a lot of people is talking about self-directing. Why people aren't talking about self-directing in Africa is because we don't do a lot of home studios in Africa. Not a lot of talents mm -hmm. have home studios. Now, when yeah. we metaphors, when we metamorphosed met to that stage where we where a lot of people have um home studios, then we'll identify that there's a problem with self-directed. Then we'll start talking mm. about it. So because of that challenge, because of that challenge, I was willing to travel. I was going to Ivory Coast, I was going to Kenya. I, I didn't go to Zambia, I did that over the phone. Um, but Ghana, I could go to Ghana. You, you could travel around West Africa without needing um, without needing a, a, a visa. You can go to the East African countries with visa on arrival. Mm. So all of a lot of that was easy before COVID. Mm. So yeah, I had to travel, be in the room with those guys, and after you've worked with them once or twice, sometimes it's easy. And then you can also train people on how to um maybe this the sound engineers because as i'm growing in the business i'm having network of studios across africa so mm. right now when covid started i don't need to travel i've got a network yeah. of studios in different countries where that i can work with and that mm. that made 
things easier. Easier. But for instance, yesterday I was I was directing a session. I'm, I'm going to talk about a bit about self directing now. I was directing mm -hmm. a session, and the guy was struggling with the guy was struggling with the session. He's a good talent, professional talent, but he didn't get enough time to see the, the, the to read through the script because talents and clients sent the script in late. So that got mm -hmm. him a bit agitated and that was affecting his voice. Now, all I needed to do was to calm him down. And all I did was the breathing exercise. Breathing, breathe out. Breathing, breathe out. Breathing, hold it, hold it, exhale. Hold it, hold it, exhale. Mm. And voila, dude was good. Mm. And the next set, the next, the next takes were fantastic. And we were wow. good. Wow. Now, that because that was because I was in the room. And that's yeah. also because the guy cannot self-direct himself. He couldn't understand psychologically what was causing, what was making him uh, make a lot of mistakes in his read. But mm -hmm. I could sense it. So that's, um, mm -hmm. I, I'm wondering if that answers your question. Though. <laughs> yes, it does. You know, I was even going to ask you the challenges you faced as a, as a casting director, but then even from your explanations, I could hear some of these challenges like um, self-directing, which seems to be the major and, or are there other things that you didn't mention in that? Oh yes. I'll tell you one big thing, one mm. big problem in casting. You find a lot of people who probably have spent 200 hours creating a demo. Hmm. Cutting out mistakes, cutting it, cutting it, cutting it, cutting it, cutting it over and over, over and over, over and over. And then they brought us something that sounds really great. And then they send it to you. And sometimes all you're casting with is a demo, um, a demo of um, uh, maybe a previous project. Hmm. Or you're casting with a demo. And then you'd be like, okay, that's the perfect fit for this project. Uh, for this script. Mm. Hey, dude, you call them into the studio and they came. You're excited about the session. You found the perfect voice and they step into the boot. And the first thing you are, you realize is he can't even sight read. Mm. But how can you not be able to sight read? And you came up with such an amazing demo. Mm. Then that's another thing about, uh, that's another challenge, uh, a real big challenge in casting when people um, people are not true to their demos. They send mm. you a heavily edited demo. And uh, when you call them in, you realize that there's a problem. It's very mm. unprofessional. Mm. Mm. You get it? That's so sometimes uh, I'll, I'll say to a lot of people, if you're not there yet, you're not there yet. Mm. Yeah, if you're not there yet, you're not there yet. And then for 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 production houses, um, yeah, you can step into a production house, pay for a session, and get your session recorded. It's your money, and however time they need to edit, they edit it. And then you're sending it out that okay, yeah, you're one of the best uh, voice talents in town. But when you're called for a project, now the challenge with that is. If I call you for call you in for a project and you and you mess up that session, I won't think about you again. Even when you have grown and you've become so good, your the memories of the time where you came to waste my time and waste my session will not leave. So it will be hard yeah. to give you a second chance. So I tell the people, try to get it first before you try to get the jobs. Wow. That's uh, great advice. It's it's nice hearing these things from a casting director's perspective, you know. And um, th that leads me to ask the question. You've given an advice, Etib. I want to understand what you believe that voice talent should do or how they can go about positioning themselves. Now, let's say they've done the job of being good enough, right? They can sight read, they can defend the demo. How then do they position themselves to be found by casting directors like you? Now, also a bit of background. How we get jobs in Nigeria is still a mystery to, to a lot of voice actors, right? Uh, uh, it seems like the agencies already have 
talents that they work with. And, you know, there's no problem with that. Only that it then feels like the, the big jobs are there, but a, a whole crop of voice talents that, you know, are also very talented, don't know how to access them. So if we had, for instance, agents in Nigeria, voice agents in Nigeria, they can do the work, but unfortunately we don't have much of that here. I don't even think we have any, unlike in South Africa that there are a couple of them. So the voice talents have to hustle their way. So the question I'm asking you is, what is the hustling strategy that you would advise for voice talents to apply in getting better jobs for themselves in this ecosystem? <laughs> Very interesting question. Can be exhausted in, it cannot be exhausted in, in five minutes or in 10 minutes. In fact, okay. for View Africa 2022, I'm doing a session on finding jobs in Africa, finding voiceover jobs in Africa. Great. Now, in my time, I have come to realize that there are some it's actually not even the problem. It's not even the advertising agencies. For instance, if you come to Nigeria, the first guys you should be thinking about are the production houses, hmm. the production studios. They are the first. They are the guys that handle the bulk, the bulk of the projects. Now, what you have is the advertising agencies gets the job. And they push it down to the production houses, the studios, the directors that they have a relationship with. Sometimes the agencies will tell them the voice that they want. For instance, if you're going to do a project for Glow, Femi Shewalu's voice would be the sign off. Yeah. You get that. But any other yeah. person's voice can shall be there. Now, it is the guy, the studio, who's been given the job or the producer who's been given the job that picks the voice that they want. Hmm. Many other times, they, they, they come to the casting director, like myself. I get that a lot. They tell you, okay, um, we have this project. Can you send me samples? Hmm. So I get the privilege to send a couple of samples. So what I do, and of course, you don't send, when you're sending samples, basically you professionally you send like three samples for a project. You don't want to bother with to, to listen to two many things. So you do the listening first. So it is me who will select the three samples I think is fit for the job. And I'll send the client to the clients. And the clients will pick who they want. Even the sometimes the advertising agencies will tell you, oh, which voice do you think we can use for this project? You, I'll send them a couple of voices. They'll pick the voice they need. So first, it's the you need to find the production houses that do voiceovers, mm -hmm. the directors in those production houses, and sometimes they are independent producers that handle voiceover project. Create mm -hmm. a relationship with them. Let them have your demo. That's one of the first strategy you should deploy in the African space apart from South Africa. South Africa has a different, but apart from South Africa, the rest of us, we're about the same thing. Mm. So the first thing is to identify the producers, the casting directors, then the production houses. I know a few, good guys, great guys, but virtually every day they're turning out the pro voice of a project. Now, sometimes we casting directors also have this bias sometimes. There are guys whom we've used for project, they were so amazing. We always think of them first. Yeah. Do you get it? I know that that bias exists. Yeah, we always does. think about them because you want show hands. Now, one interesting thing is that you do a project for a client, you nail it, the project, the clients will come back again. So the voice mm -hmm. talents are also very important to us. Mm -hmm. They're the gold. They're the gold. We just mind them. Yeah. Do you get yeah. it? So man, yeah. that's one strategy. The second strategy is the... Um, social media especially instagram the thing is mm. the guys the, the guys the, the the clients you're looking for they're also on instagram so now you need to know how to use the hashtags know how to use the social media platforms and then you need to also know how to create content do a bit of content do a bit of content creation interestingly we've got someone who will be talking about content creation at view africa because we identify the problems 
We identify the mm -hmm. problems those talents are facing. So you need to know how to do a bit of content around you, around mm -hmm. you. You can talk about those guys. You can talk about the wing of a plane. You can talk about your foot. You can talk about how silly your eye looks, even though it doesn't look silly. But the point <laughs> is you're selling your voice. Yeah. You get it? So build yeah. content. All kind of content, all sorts of content. Fill your page. But use the hashtags mm -hmm. right so that they can find you where they're looking for voice talent. Then another mm -hmm. thing, the paper click, paper click sites. Mm -hmm. You get it? You need yeah. to get your voices on those platforms. But while you're getting, mm -hmm. do something professional, do a professional, uh, professional demo or demo. For me, anyway, I I see it differently. Hmm. I like to cast with previous projects more than a demo. Hmm. It doesn't. It's not a rule. Yeah. It also doesn't say it's the best way. But that's for hmm. me. I like to cast with previous projects. So send me your previous, host your previous project on platforms. Any any voiceover platform that you think people go to, host your voice, mm -hmm. host your samples there. And people mm -hmm. will, and then these guys attract a lot of people. And that's some of the ways you can get jobs in Africa. Amazing. Um, I We could go on and on with this, but let's leave it for the conference. People need to register. You know, only you, you've been able to bring up this. I can't then imagine all of the plethora of um, guests, speakers that will be dishing out valuable stuff. So I'll just advise if you're listening right now, um, because if, if you're listening right now before the conference, it's a good time to register. But if you're listening after the conference, I don't know if there's another opportunity for you to go back to what has been said, but you look forward to the next conference. <laughs> all right. So, um, Thank you so much, Ibeka, for all that you've said. Let's talk about the conference itself. You started the Voice Over Africa, VO Africa conference in 2021, which you know I, I was privileged to be a part of. And like we were saying before we started recording, I was inspired greatly by it. Meeting various voiceover personalities, industry leaders in different countries across the world. And we're having another one this year. But before we talk about this year's um, conference, what inspired you in the first place to create the Voice Over Africa conference? Great. One key thing that inspired me is my desire to cast African voices in global projects. Mm. Simple. Now, I've worked in some African in some African countries. I've interacted with a lot of African talents. I beat my chest to say that we've got amazing voices in Africa. Amazing mm. voices in Africa. Now that's to one side. We've also got amazing stories, stories that mm. are aging to be told, stories that are screaming, tell me, tell me, tell me. But people aren't hearing about those stories. People don't even know those great voices exist. But even though those great voices exist, you also listen to those voices, you see why they are not going global. Because they don't sometimes, so a lot of them don't have the information. Mm -hmm. Then some of them have great, great voices, good usage, but they lack the tacticality. You can sound the same way on a commercial project and on an audiobook or an e-learning project. So you need that technicality, even though you are amazing talent. An interesting thing is that you can learn. But you need a platform to be able to learn. Yeah. Now, if you want to attend the average conference anywhere in the world, you'll be paying above $250. Hmm. You pay as much as $800 or $500 for a conference like Mabo. Hmm. But I thought to myself, can I bring those guys to come speak to Africans for the price that the Africans can pay? Mm. get it because yeah. we need that information yeah. so if you check the talents that will be speaking at view africa they're still the same kind of guys who will be speaking in fact some of them are the for instance marvel uh that, that's mid-atlantic voice uh, voiceover the keynote speaker is mcgraw the keynote speaker for view africa is mcgraw wow same awesome. guy same quality 
But for you to register for Marvel, it will be five, between $500 to $800. For you to register for View Africa will be less than $50. Yeah. In fact, the promo that just ended was $15. Yeah. Yeah. Now, why are we doing that? We need the information. The guys need to learn. They need to grow. They need to be to learn how to cast their voices for global projects. Trust me, the day that one guy, one guy resident in Africa is able to cast in a Disney project and earns a hundred and earns a whole lot of dollars, you will see how much it can change in the African ecosystem. Hmm. And it's possible. Yeah. The talents are there. They have the usage of their voice. They know how to use their voice. But they don't have the opportunity. They don't know how to find it. And trust me, I'm not, I don't subscribe for you giving me the opportunity because I'm African. No. That's not the kind of guy I am. Give me the opportunity because you've identified the fact that I can do it. Mm. Also, I've seen a lot of projects that are African themed. And what do you find there? You find Americans there. You find that they, they actually work with linguists who teach them mm. how to speak the language or who teach mm. them how to try to sound like the Africans. Mm. And they earn all the dollars and we celebrate the project. For instance, Lion King is African themed. Yeah. Madagascar has a lot of African team in it. Yeah. Wakanda is African teamed. Wakanda. <laughs> yeah. You get it. So yeah. you see, and a lot of this project are African teamed, but you don't have African, real African talents who can do the African accent effortlessly. You don't have them on this project. So we're losing on we're losing out on potential dollars. Hmm. We need those hmm. funds. We need those opportunities for African talents. Hmm. And hey. Somebody has to start trying to make it happen. And when he mm. stops, other guys will take over. But it will happen. Mm. We also need to be able to tell our stories. Not tell our stories for us, because that's the mistake we make. So we are a lot, a lot stereotyped in the way we do those things. We need to be able mm. to tell our stories for global audience. And it's a different mm. kind of technicality. Mm. You get it. So we need yeah. to learn all of those things. And the conference platform is one way to get there. Fantastic. Um, I can't wait to attend the conference. And I look forward to I mean, you know, the many things that will be said in the conference. This year, we have a great um, number of speakers that will be speaking. Would, do you mind telling us um, what to expect right, from this year's conference? Okay. Um, what, there's a lot to expect, expect in this year's conference. I'll talk about a few things for the sake of this. Um, one thing you should also have noticed is that I talk a lot. <laughs> Interesting. We all do something in, in one way or the other as, as voice actors. <laughs> so I'll just try to constrain myself. So, so now, um, one of the ways, one of the things I've identified in the African space is that we do voiceover for commercial. We don't do voiceover for entertainment. Mm. And one big problem we have is that we have a lot of guys going into the space, but we have few opportunities for those guys. Mm. How can we get more voice talents engaged? Is if we are able, one key way is to open up other genres, especially the voiceover part, the part of voiceover that um, that is for entertainment. Mm. What part of voiceover is that? Animation, gaming. So I figured out that we need to do more animation projects in Africa. We need to do more gaming projects in Africa. We need to have more gaming, more voices that are tech, more technically sound voices for animation, technically sound voices for gaming. So one of the key things I've tried to do this year is to introduce more sessions that speak mm. directly to gaming, directly to animation. We're going to have workshops on animation, workshops on gaming. Yes, we're going to have two, um, two um, intensives. Those sessions are they're pricey. 
Yes. For instance, one session is about um, animation characters, make, creating animation characters. Now, that session is going to be just for um, 12 people. That session is going mm. to cost $100. But you will come out of that session ready to create a demo that should be that you could use to seek for opportunities in DC. Hmm. You have to Fantastic. come out of that session well-rounded for animation. Now, if you listen to um, the, the animation we do in Africa, this is not me trying to talk down in any, but we're doing, we're, we're doing a lot. They, we're doing a lot. We're, we're trying compared to the information that we have and the opportunities we have. We're doing great. But you see that you find a lot of people trying to sound like the characters they are depicting, not actually being the character. Mm. When you do animation, I should never hear you trying to sound like that character. I mm. should always think that you are that character. Mickey Mouse yeah. is Mickey Mouse. It's not some guy trying to be Mickey. And he's mm. consistent. Paddington is Paddington. There's not some guy trying to be Paddington. And he's consistent. Yeah. You get it. But here yeah. you hear some guy, maybe someday somebody told you that you have to sound in this kind of way to do animation. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, absolutely no. And he's doing that because he doesn't know how else to do it. Hmm. So he needs to relearn. So this um, conference is focusing a lot on um, animation. It's focusing a lot on gaming. And it's focusing a lot on still every other part of uh, it's also focusing a lot on getting into voiceover because mm. that's one part that's one um one part that will never go out of fashion every day somebody every day every month every year somebody will be trying to get into voiceover and trying to know what to do and if you start right with the right information then um the journey becomes easier for you so we're talking, we'll be looking at a lot of people. We're looking at people trying to come into the industry. We'll be looking at people. Um, uh, we'll be looking at animation. We'll be looking at gaming. And we also have a special feature on um, the place of Swahili in the voiceover mm -hmm. industry. So we have a Swahili session. Now, Swahili is spoken by over 100 million people in Africa. It is a commercial language. It yeah. is a big language. People fail to understand that voiceover is not only done in English. Yeah. Voiceover done in Swahili, in Hausa, in Yoruba is equally as important as voiceover done in English. So we need to find time to celebrate those languages. You get it? And also yeah. train people on those languages as well. You get it? Mm -hmm. And then those guys who can speak those languages should not feel like... Um, they're irrelevant in the in the ecosystem. They are relevant. So mm. that we're doing a special session on Swahili, which will, yes, it will cater for the East African audience and for every other every other person who um who picks an interest in Swahili would also mm. learn that. Would also learn about the India. Sometimes you don't you just even want to know that there's something like Swahili. There's a this amount of people speak Swahili. And this this is unique about them. Now, when you know about those things, you can even respect the people better. Hmm. Absolutely uh, a genius idea. And I can't wait again, like I said earlier, to be a part of this year's um, conference. Well, um, I'd have loved us to talk about uh, what you're doing with the African Voice and Media Works, but we'll probably leave that conversation for another day. It's a whole different ball game entirely. But from your experience so far, over a decade in the industry, doing what you've been doing, where do you see the African voiceover industry in, say, the next five years? Hmm. You know, when I started um, View Africa in 2021, I had people ask me, Oh, do you guys do voiceover in Africa? Wow. Hell, yes, we do. And wow. I hear people ask me, do you guys do the watch cartoons like Cartoon Network, DreamWorks in Africa? I'm like, hell yes. We grew up watching these things. In fact, we grew up wanting to be those characters. 
Hmm. So we're not we're not in even even burning on the streets. We're not alien burning and friends. We're not alien to yeah. them. Yeah, <laughs> we're not alien to them. Yeah, you get it. Talk more of Spider Man, Spidey and friends. Marvel, yeah, I Marvel, DreamWorks, uh, DC, and all its princesses. Yeah, Wolverines. Oh, come on. So <laughs> that's just twenty twenty one. That wasn't 1990. Last year. Wow. Just 2021. Someone is asking me about that. Now, in the next five years, people will understand that there's a voice of our industry in Africa. There are great African talents we can network with, we can we can do project with, we can cast for African voices easily. We don't have to try to stress to use American voices to do African projects. We can find African voices. That's where I see, I see that in the next five years, not so much would have changed, but people will know that an industry exists in Africa and Africans will know that voiceover is beyond what they, what they know, what they think. Mm -hmm. I'm seeking, you see, um, there's this mindset. When a voice talent is big in one home country, he feels like he's big. There are mm -hmm. oceans to conquer. Look, mm. the talents we have here will compete with talents internationally and even win mm. projects. Mm. But they are not even they are not even aspiring for it. They don't even know mm. to aspire for it. Mm. So in the next five years, I want to see a lot of information filter into the African voiceover industry because in the African space, because it's with this information that you will do more. Hmm. Wow, I'm so inspired right now with what you're saying. Um, part of the development, like you mentioned, is, for instance, uh, Sovas Awards opening up a category for African voiceovers, right? And and I see more of that happening in the coming Absolutely. years. Absolutely. And we're going, we're just international at this stage. Well, uh, it's been fun talking with you. And speaking about fun, what do you do when you're not voice casting or doing voiceovers? You know, or uh, what did you call that? Um, acting, acting, directing, <laughs> if I got that right. <laughs> or directing, let's just say directing. <laughs> okay, directing. Okay, uh, what do I do? Hmm. It's interesting. Um, I'll just count a couple of things because it could be anything. Now, first, I love soccer. Ah. I watch football a lot. Um, I'm a fan of Man United, but I've not been supporting Manchester for the past four years. It's been less than <laughs> ever. Oh, my but God. This, year, this yeah. year is looking like, funny enough, funny enough, every year I get, uh, most most times, most years I'll get a new, uh, the, the season jersey for the family. So the oh, family remembers cute. that they are Man U fans, but um, <laughs> I'm there shouting for Leicester and everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's one part of me. The other part of me loves to drive. I just, um, I, I, I could drive for fun. I, said, I love to drive. Just wow. get on a car and move. Interesting. I love oh, to drive. Even in Lagos I traffic. <laughs> oh, well, I plan my way. I hate. Okay. I, I love to drive. I love to drive, but I hate traffic. Okay. Okay. <laughs> cool. So um, yeah, I also I I also love music. Uh, I listen to music a lot. Um, not uh not a class of music a lot of people like to, but then I like soft rock. I like country music, and then I also like um I also like a lot of the Igbo traditional music, traditional songs, especially the Igbo mm -hmm. praise and worship songs. So mm. I, I love that. Yeah. And I also I also develop business for fun. Ah. That, that's <laughs> something I, it's obvious with, with the things you've done so far, you know. <laughs> when I have a spare time, I want to just dream. I want to dream new things, dream new projects, dream new heights. I, I dream Amazing. a lot too. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. It's been it's been fun and um interesting, insightful talking to you. I've learned a lot and I must appreciate you once again for accepting to be on this podcast. Um to everyone, to you listening right now, hopefully if you're listening before 
uh, the conference, I would advise if you're an African, please register for the Voice Over Africa conference. It's happening um, September 10, if I am not mistaken. September 9th to 11th. September 9th to 11th. So we have great speakers that will be speaking and there's a lot to learn. You can check the link of this uh, podcast. You can check um, in the show notes. We're going to drop the link to register there and, you know, just keep learning, keep growing. Thank you so much, Emeka. Any other thing you'd like to say before we leave, you know, maybe a word of advice or something, your two cents. Oh, okay. Um, um, Maybe I'll just drop an advice for everyone who is trying to come into the voice acting space. First, it's not just about your voice. Look, look, um, to succeed in voice in, in, in voice in the voice of a space is just about 10% of your voice. Mm. It's more of what you can do with your voice, the usage of your voice. I say to everybody, everyone's got a good voice. Just know how to use it. I'll give an example. If I'm doing a, if I'm doing a project right now, and I need um, a tout. I have a, a, a casting role for a tout. If I get that great voice talent to come do it out, it probably will struggle. But if I go get a tout from the street and put on that set, he's going to do it. He's going to do a fantastic job. And when that project goes out, people are going to listen and say, ah, who did that tout role? He's a very fantastic talent. Yeah. But if I take that tout to do a commercial, it's going to soak at it. Yeah. So. It's not just about your voice. You have that great sound and voice. Don't think you're there yet. Calm down. Calm down. Mm. Train. Learn mm. how to use your voice. It's more about the usage of the voice than the sound of the voice. Amazing. That That's just the best way to end this podcast today. Thank you once again, Emeka. And to you listening, thank you as well. Like the podcast, drop your comments, and you can send us a mail at everythingvoiceovers at gmail.com. Let us know what you think. You can drop your questions. Are there guests you want us to bring on this podcast next time? Feel free to drop it there and we'll work on it. Well, that's it for today. And uh, we see at the conference, Emeka. Yeah, take care of yourself. (laughs) Thank (laughs) you, man. I appreciate this opportunity. Bye-bye. Bye to you too. And to everyone out there, uh, keep voicing and keep winning. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe, leave a comment, and tell someone about it. Follow the podcast on everything videos on all social media platforms. Thanks for listening and see you on the next episode.